everyone, and Happy New Year. Happy 2019, and as always, we appreciate your downloading and listening to Sub Talk Radio. Hard to believe this is actually our sixth year of existence. And again, can't thank you, all the listeners, all the subscribers, followers, for making us uh, what we are today. You know, I'm excited. Our first guest of the year, again, fits all the boxes that I look for in a company. You know, fully transparent labels, really nice dosages, nice labels. And again, for one of the few times, I actually spoke with one of the uh, owners earlier this week and hit it off right from the bat. And again, really looking forward to this conversation today. So in my long-windedness, allow me to introduce Mike and Ray of Extreme Life Performance. Gents, welcome to the show. What's up, Sean? I was only with Sean. So guys, we're, again, I, we're stoked to be we're stoked to be on, man. We really are. We're stoked to be on. We appreciate you having on a, uh, uh, the first of the year here, you know, 2019, kicking it off, um, and excited to be on your on your show, man. We listen to quite a few of your co- podcasts over over time, and uh, uh, they're all exciting, man. They're they're uh, we like it. We like we like how your your focus is on the uh, um, no prop blends and stuff like that. So we're excited to be on. And again, I, I appreciate you taking time. I know you guys have regular jobs, and we appreciate you stepping away for just a few minutes to talk to me, talk to listeners, and uh, you know, let the people know of another great company and, and another great product that's out there. Um, so I guess let's start off. Tell me a little bit about the, the existence or how long you guys have been in business. Well, so so far, man, uh, we're actually, we're, uh, I don't know how you want to say it, in business-wise, we, we started... Uh, um, this April will be actually three years that um, since kind of the conception of Ripcord uh, itself as a as an uh, energy product or pre workout, you know what most people call pre workout. Um, so it was kind of an uphill battle with flavoring and manufacturing things like that. Um, but fortunately, we got through it. The uh, uh, um, but we're about a year. Let's see what September. So we got our product in like September 9th, um, uh, two thousand. Uh, 17 right 17 yeah so we have we've had the product for about a year a little over a year and change now so that we've actually been selling it to the, to the public very nice so i guess what is what is your relationship between you and ray are you guys co-workers or how do you guys know each other um actually longtime friends we we met in the gym uh way back before um geez i don't know what 15 years yeah we used to go to the same gym and uh uh, we used to, I, I'm one of those guys that uh, I like to spread knowledge. If I, I know something or I want to uh, ask questions about something, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy, and, um, and that's how we hit it off. Yeah, basically, Ray, if, if, you've, if you've checked out his Instagram or anything like that or his Facebook, you'll see that he actually, um, he's around, what are you, 50, 51? F- 54. 54, holy smokes. Um, yeah. But anyway, so he's actually still competing. But so back in the day, we used to go to the same gym together, like like he said, and uh, um, you know, and he's full of knowledge and whatever. But he's always been helpful. To it doesn't matter if you're, you know, young, old, heavy, you know, like trying to lose weight, whatever. Like he was always kind of the go-to guy. It's just just super intelligent, but also just more more friendly. Like taking away that whole Planet Fitness is model of uh, gym intimidation, if you will, like. Um, you know, if Ray's around, there is none. So it's kind of cool. So we, uh, you know, we really did hit it off. And then, uh, um, actually my wife and I ended up building a gym, uh, locally. And then obviously he was actually one of our, our first members, if not, actually he was a first member. He was the first member. Yeah. He's the first member of BBW. Yep. So, so, you know, so we've been longtime friends. Um, and then, uh, um, that's kind of how, you know, we became friends or whatever was just through the gym. And, And Mike, you don't have a lunk alarm in your gym, do you? Uh, what is it? Oh, a lunk alarm. No, 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 no lunk alarms, man. Actually, it's just the opposite of that. We, uh, um, we actually have what we call a warrior room in the back, um, where you could do all your deadlifts and stuff, but it's, it's all kind of, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, our dumbbells go from five to 200. So, I mean, you know, we're not afraid to have people pressing some weight and, and, and things like that. So it's more geared towards, it is, I mean, it's geared for everybody. I mean, it really has a nice like feel to it, but, uh, definitely no lunk alarms. You know, I mean, you can wear a tank top in there if you want, or, uh, uh, you want to bring your your water with you. You're allowed to have your water. You know, I want I, I want to I want to quickly bash and I'm gonna quickly move on. Okay, so I don't understand. Yep, Planet, I don't understand Planet Fitness. I understand, you know, the the, the philosophy, but their motto is a judgment free zone. 
but yet exactly. they, they judge all the people <laughs> that are, are heavy lifters, yep. bodybuilders. They can't lift heavy. So how is that not it, a judgment-free zone? I, I honestly, I ask myself that every time I see their sign. I really do. I mean, every every time I see that sign, oh, no gym intimidation, no you know, no judgment-free zone or whatever, and it's like, yeah, you're the first one to judge, you know. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that works out, but they got a hell of a, of a business plan, that's for sure. Yeah, well, you can't beat it. You know, it's 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 ten dollars a month in unlimited pizza and donuts and and bagels. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I got to start. Uh, yeah, I no, start I get off it. A little bit. I get it. Yep, yep, yep. Go ahead. So, so tell me about the, tell me about the name first and foremost. I guess how many? Uh, how did you guys come up with it? How many maybe renditions of a of a business name did you guys go through? Um, geez, I don't know. How many did we go through? Quite a few. For yeah. for 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 uh, extreme my performance, that was that was probably harder. Ripcord kind of um, that more or less. I was kind of driving along, and, and my wife were in the, my wife and I we were actually going somewhere one day, and and. Uh, um, it just kind of popped in my head because I've been thinking about supplements for, for a long time. I, um, just a little bit of my background, I actually opened up a supplement store in 2008. Um, it's still actually, it's currently in our, our gym facility, um, but I've been taking supplements since 97. So anyway, just to kind of give you a little bit of that background, I've been around it for a long time, but we were driving somewhere one day and, and I said to my wife, I'm like, man, how cool would it be to have a product called like a ripcord? You know what I mean? Cause, and, I, and I think of ripcord like um, not as like your parachute, you know what I mean, but as, um, uh, uh, those little cars back in the day that oh, you, used to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, used to get them when you, hit, you know what I mean? You rip that rip cord or whatever, and that thing would just take off and just like, if you had a smooth floor, man, I think it would just go forever, you know? So yep. the, uh, so the whole idea of, of, of rip cord, it was kind of just like the name. I like the idea of the name. Um, and that's kind of how the, that like for the product part of it, but XLP, uh, as far as that, that took us a little bit because we wanted to have something that was, was meaningful, um, uh, just for you know, for every day, like we, Ripcord is more of a performance-driven product, um, you know, and that's kind of where it came from. And an extreme life, like we, we're raised real big into bodybuilding and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm into the gym. I, I, I love working. I've never competed or anything like that. But aside from that, I grew up doing, you know, snowboarding, dirt biking, like all that kind of stuff. More, more, I don't know, like uh, just kind of like extreme sports style stuff. Um, so that's kind of how the name kind of came about. We just kind of pieced it together like that. Gotcha. And uh, I was just gonna, I, I just drew a mental block here. But so so what? So do you, do you think to a point? I want to be honest here. Do, with spelling the website with an X, do you think it's confusing to some people, or or are you losing anybody by not spelling it extreme with the E? Well, um, yes and no, and 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 I get where you're going with that, and we actually ended up purchasing extreme life performance with the E as well. And it actually redirects, oh, okay. um, or at least it did. So I don't, I don't know, but yeah, we get the, the hang up on that. And I, and I always have to tell people, even if I'm giving out the email address or whatever else, it's, you know, it's, it's extreme without the E, you know? So the, uh, um, it is a little confusing, I think for people, but you know, if, uh, you know, if, if as long as it's been, I guess, dictated them properly and explained, you know, then, then they get it, you know what I mean? They're, or, you know, if they're looking for either way, like website wise, Yep. You know, it, it shouldn't be too much of a hang-up because it does redirect. Um, the uh, We actually, you know, in our intentions with our website versus the product, we actually, um, we just got ripcord.com. Um, oh, wow. So, okay. yeah, so we own that as well, which that was kind of a little bit of a, of a thing. Somebody tried to sell it to me a couple of years ago for a few thousand dollars, and finally, uh, in the end, I hope we get it for a hundred bucks. Yeah. In, the, in the end, all the guy finally came down. It was like he started out a few thousand dollars, like, uh, probably like two and a half years ago, and when we first launched the product, I had this like some random guy reached out to me and said, "Hey, you want to buy this for?" It was like, I don't know, it was almost like three grand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, "Nah, no, nah, I'm not interested right now." You know, just because you know we only had a budget for X amount of dollars, and uh, lo and behold, about four months ago, five months ago, six months ago, I guess that's mm-hmm. been a little while. We uh, yeah. we um, uh, ended up purchasing it for a hundred bucks. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's scary it's scary because people do that. They will go ahead and buy websites that they think might be very popular yeah. and uh and, right. and actually make money off of them. Obviously you got you got the better end of the yep. stick, but some people don't. Yep. Yep, yep. No, agreed. Yeah, we actually have a friend of ours that uh, uh that's all he does. He's he's got hundreds of websites and, and that's what he does. He you know, he he looks for those things that are kinda like niche and he'll buy them and then he sells them, you know. Um but fortunately, yeah, it worked out for us. The because uh, we'll, we'll, 
so eventually what we'd like to do is extreme life performance. We don't have any, any real athletes per se or, or, or promoters or sponsors or whatever underneath us right now that, that, um, uh, would be on there, but our, our, that side of it eventually want to take extreme life performance and just be, you know, extreme sports and, and things like that, whether it's from lifting, powerlifting, competing, you know, for bodybuilding, fitness, bikini, whatever, yep. um, right up to, to snowboarding and stuff like that, and then keep ripcord.com just for the product itself, and that's it. Nice. Hey, so and, Mike, yep. and Mike, when we spoke offline the other day, and I don't know if we tackled this or not, I mean, as we both know, maybe it was text, I know we chatted for a lot here, you know, the supplement yeah. industry is multi, multi, multi billion dollars. It's so competitive. It's so crazy. What made you guys want to jump into this crazy freaking pool? Yeah, I know. Well, and sometimes we still ask ourselves that question. The uh, um, no, but honestly, you know. So again, just my history and 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 reading labels and things like that, just uh, um, through our supplement company. Um, uh, I guess more or less the supplement store, not, not our supplement company. Um, but we wanted to create something that was more of a healthy version. So it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a get rich quick scheme by any means. Like that's not what the intentions are. Um, of course, yes, we do want to make money at it. Sure. But the, uh, the whole intentions was to bring a, uh, quality product, um, that's super functional and cost effective to the consumer, you know? So, um, you know, we, we wanted to jump in there and just kind of be set ourselves apart a little bit. Um, again, being almost three years old, I mean, I know, I know, um, like I said in the beginning, I know it was a little bit jumbled there, but like, you know, your whole, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but your drive on this whole no prop blends and all that stuff, like, you know, that was our intentions right from the get go. You know I mean? It wasn't, um, you know, because I, I just don't believe in that. I don't, I, I feel like if you're, if you're doing a prop blend, you're, you're hiding something that, that, um, that you don't want to disclose to your consumer. I mean, that's literally the only thing that, that you could possibly be doing. There's no reason to do a pop blend unless you're, you know, unfortunately just being lazy in the industry and you don't want to create your own label and you're buying, you know, whatever that manufacturer has laying around or whatever as far as, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, pre-existing labels because you could do that. Anybody can jump in the supplement industry and just, you know, just get a label that the manufacturer already has. Yep, pull out um, the catalog. You know, right, yeah, 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 exactly. You know what I mean? So the... Uh, um, but anyway, so for us to jump in there, like I said, we wanted to create a product that was first and foremost quality and quality meaning, you know, not only from where it's made with the, you know, the CGMP and, and, you know, certified good manufacturing practices along with the FDA registered facility for the, you know, the stringent, um, uh, guidelines, you know what I mean? And, and as far as the, uh, um, uh, where it's made, you know what I mean? Like the, you know, your product, when you first get your, your stuff made, it's actually like quarantined. People aren't like real sure on like what that means it's you know when you when you get something that's made cgmp and and, an fda registered facility they actually take your product they 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 pull whatever they're going to make all the ingredients they let it sit for they test it then they let it sit for 30 days they retest it and then if it if it pans out to be good you know for for uh, heavy metals and bacterias and microbes and stuff like that then they actually go ahead and go into production so it's, it's actually a little bit more um, complicated to just go in and saying, Hey, listen, let's get this made up, you know? So for us, you know, that quality first, but also a product that it also, as you see in there, we have antioxidants and things like that, things that are actually good for brain health and heart health and, and, and what have you. We wanted to create a product that's not just going to get you amped up for the gym, but it's also going to function in your recovery, your mental, you know, your, 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 um, um, uh, like no tropic style, like your, your mental part of it, you know, the, uh, um, you know, so it's, it's, more geared, like I said, to be a healthy product. So I guess for us to get in there, we just kind of want to set ourselves apart. And it's a little bit more expensive, but not really. I mean, if I really honestly believe if you took our product and kind of, you know, compared labels, we probably could be selling our product for advertised retail price as, you know, 90 bucks. You know, I mean, to be honest, I mean, if you look at our label, but, you know, again, I don't believe, like, and Ray and I both together, we don't, you know, we don't believe in, um, you know, these guys that are they're making these products, you see them advertised online for 50 bucks, but you can buy it at wholesale or Amazon or whatever for half price. Yep. Like then, then your product really is only half price. You're sabotaging yourself. You know what I mean? Like you're literally pricing yourself out of the market when you do that. So the, uh, you know, we, we don't make a lot on Ripcord, but the, uh, you know, the, the intentions are good. 
Well, that's it. As, as a smaller company, it's always, you know, my philosophy for a smaller company that's coming out with a product, regardless if it's supplements or whatever it is, and some people agree to disagree, is you know what? Make a small profit for now, flood the hell out of the market, and just get that name out sure. there, and then slowly raise the price little by little if you have to. You know, not 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 right. crazily, but at the end of the day, as long as you're showing a profit, whether it's a dollar or two dollars at the infancy, sure. and again, then you start blowing yeah. out more profit. Right. Yep. No, agreed. You know, I agree. I agree. The uh, you know, um, getting our product out there. You know, I mean, even that. I mean, it's just uh, you know, we we've done uh, a lot of hair scrambles and stuff like that. We've done some gym appearances and things. You know, and it's it's. Uh, that's a game in itself, getting your product out there, you know, and trying to make it affordable. The, the um, um, Even the supplements that, that I sell at, at the gym, you know what I mean? Like, even that, going back to that, I hate to keep going back to it, but it's just kind of been, you know, um, we used to have what they called Muscle Mag. I don't know if you remember that oh, or whatever. Yeah. It was obviously a magazine. Yep. But they actually used to have stores, right? So those stores, like, I remember back in the day, we used to drive, how long was it to go to Muscle Mag? Uh, 45 40 minutes, minutes. 45 minutes, you know, so we'd drive 45 minutes to go buy our, our supplements, you know, because they had great pricing and, and things like that. And that was really kind of what set the tone for me when I wanted to open up my, my local small shop, um, you know, was the fact that the prices were affordable and things like that. And, and that's just kind of stuck. Like I don't even charge at the, at, you know, at our supplement shop, I don't even charge a percentage that would, um, would, I guess, allot me to get an increase in my which sounds silly, but I don't like, so if, if, if Optimum Nutrition or, or whatever, actually speaking of Optimum, I, I don't carry them that much, the, unless it's special order, but the, uh, um, like BSN, if, they're, if they have a price increase or whatever and it goes up 3 or 4%, like my money doesn't change. My, my product, I still make the 2 3 $4 on, on whatever product it is yep. the same. They just get more in the back end, you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I don't charge like 10%, 12%, 15% on, on all my products across the board. It's just a, whatever I feel like, you know, if I feel like, you know, if it's an $80 product and I feel like it makes four or five bucks on it, then that's what I'll make, you know what I mean? But the, uh, to try to keep it down there and, and, and effectively, you know, more or less uh, uh, kind of a convenience for the people that are coming into the gym, you know? So I just, I just don't believe in, you know, you, you don't have to overcharge people because what's going to happen with that? They're going to find out that your product is overpriced, it's underdosed for, for what you're, they're charging, and you're essentially going to lose business, you know what I mean, in the end. Like, I, I just... I don't know. I think if you start out, if you start out fair and you can keep going, as long as you can keep forging the river, you know, even if, you know, even if we don't raise our price in the future and, 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 you know, our biggest thing wouldn't be to maybe raise the price so much, but to be able to grow to a point that we can actually have a little bit more leverage as far as, you know, maybe, you know, instead of ordering 2000 bottles or whatever, maybe we get to ordering 10,000 and there's a discount from the manufacturer at that point that yep. we would see a little bit more profit on the back end. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Sorry, I'm, 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 I apologize. I'm long-winded like yourself, man. I really, I apologize for that. Ahead, whoever's listening, I'm, I'm sorry that I do come out long-winded. No, you know, you know what? It, it's, it's education. If, if, if you go off the deep end, bro, I'll rein you back in. You haven't gotten off the deep end yet. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> you better get some big hooks. <laughs> so, so, Mike, did, did you and Ray formulate this? Did you formulate it, or how did you, how did you come about the formula? Um, we actually, we, we both kind of had a hand in it. The, um, uh, we. Had, I don't know. We we both we both took our turn. You know what I mean? Yeah, like we we yeah, had, a, had a you 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 bought the product, all the ingredients, and I would tell you the dosages. So yeah. uh, I think it needs a little bit more, a little less. Yeah. So, so kind of yeah, we both. Did. I mean, I, I kind of peeled together like what all everything that I wanted in there, more or less going off what my you know just just like that healthy style and, and the ingredients that we wanted, and, and and then Ray and I you know we sat down and we discussed you know the dosages, and then he kind of hammered home on that because. You know, back in the day, like, you know, again, Ray being, you know, 54 or whatever, like, he's bought supplements for a long time, and I'm not trying to, to talk for you, but, like, the, uh, you know, he, he actually went through a time where he would actually build his own products with raw ingredients, yep. you know, that he would buy offline or whatever else, you know. So he's, he, he had dabbled more with that than versus me where I had just sold, you know, products from big-name companies or even small-name companies that already had established products. You know, I never, I never really dove into that, but the... Uh, um, once we did formulate the product, it was pretty interesting. Once we, we actually made that stuff at our kitchen table, um, for, man, for months, right? For yeah. probably, probably, I don't know. We started two jars uh, of, uh, yeah, ripcord. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we had it in Mason jars and what we would do is we would just that, you know, fortunately for us, again, having the gym, we used it as a test pool, you know? So we would just give it out to people and, and, you know, say, here, listen, I know it's going to taste like shit because there's no flavoring in it, but we just want your honest feedback as to, 
you know, how you feel on it, how do you sleep on it, and we would actually give them, if they were willing to try it for free, we'd give them a small intake form, and then, you know, they would take that and fill it out and just give us our honest feedback, you know, and, you know, the, uh, um, so the formulation kind of came about, you know, from ourselves, but then also, you know, some of our gym family had a little bit of it, too. So I, I want to kind of go into the formula just a little bit. I know you've got a very, and I mean this positively, not negatively, you've got a very large laundry list of great products and really well dosed. So, so again, listeners, I'm not saying that negatively, I'm saying that positively. You know, so, so let's take out the, the vitamins and minerals, which I think are great anyway. Um, you know, but you've got citrulline malate at 5,500 milligrams, which is a great dose. You've got leucine and isoleucine, but there's no valine. Did you, did you guys omit that for a reason, or? What is it now? Valine the... for BCAAs. You got leucine and isoleucine. Oh, valine. Okay, so so what we actually use, um, norvaline, is actually uh, a derivative of, of valine. Oh, okay. Now um, I see that now. So, okay. So, yeah. So we actually use norvaline. Um, it's not. Uh, I'm not sure. I've seen different stuff on it as far as you know how how it's come about, but it's it's not. Norvaline doesn't come from a, from a animal protein. Actually, it's a derivative of actually um, valine or whatever. So, you, so you actually it's there. It's essentially, just, but it's just norvaline. Um, gotcha. And somebody somebody actually emailed me, wanted me to ask, and maybe you can answer the question or not. From what I've seen I, with norvaline, norvaline, Norv- norvaline splitting hairs, yeah, I've seen it? dosages sure. generally. 250, 500, maybe 750 migs. Am I reading this right at 2,000 milligrams? Yep. Yeah, you are reading it right. Yes, correct. Yeah, the, uh, you know, Norvaline actually um, is more or less, uh, you know, to kind of break it down, it actually allows you to produce more NO2 and things like that. It actually helps. There's, it actually, if you, if you look at some of the studies on it, it does a lot of stuff from recovery to, you know, blood flow, things like that. Um, there's quite a bit of research out there for it. Um, it is actually, yes, 2,000 milligrams, so two grams, essentially, of uh, the norvaline, which, you know, again, we, you know, we, we um, want to maximize your pump and your blood flow and things like that, you know, so um, it is high. It's probably one of the higher ones in the market, you know, I mean, we, we've seen, you know, like you, like you yourself, I mean, we've seen them as high as, you know, as 500 maybe, um, but I haven't seen any higher than that. I personally haven't. No, and I, and I think that's great. Again, hopefully the, the listener that asked that question is, is listening to get the answer. Um, and then what made you guys use creatine HCL versus monohydrate? Um, the simple fact that um, for us, I mean, monohydrates probably had more studies, but, um, you know, the uh, monohydrate, we know it doesn't absorb as well as HCL. Um, and also the, uh, um, uh, it doesn't bring water into your bowels, you know, like monohydrate. Yep. So the, um, you know, that was a big thing for us, you know, to try to curve, like, you know, any kind of stomach issues and things like that that people might get from monohydrate, not realizing it, you know what I mean, that, that monohydrate actually brings more water into your intestines, um, you know, because creatine is meant to be a water transport, but if it's bringing a lot of it into your, into your bowels, because a lot of people will take, you know, their monohydrate, you know, they'll take it, you know, before and after. I mean, if you're getting all that water into your stomach and you're trying to work out or, or run or whatever else, then, uh, you know, it could be a major issue. Exactly, exactly. And then you've got uh, you've got isoleucine, we've got a good dose of ribose, agmatine sulfate, and then blueberry fruit extract. Aside from antioxidant, is there something else I'm missing that you have it in there? The the, the blue- as far as antioxidants? Yeah, I mean, oh. I'm thinking when I see blueberry fruit, I'm thinking antioxidants, but is there something else that I'm yeah. missing that you guys are using it for or, or adding it for? Uh, well, actually, um, the blueberry extract actually uh, um, will help with like some of your your uh, um, uh, your brain, it actually it actually uh, helps with your brain signals. Okay. Right. So it actually uh, it has good uh, um, effects for like even for like positive for your memory and things like that. Um, it has. There's been a little bit of studies on where it could possibly have some some weight loss um, effects as well. But more or less, it's just more for the antioxidants. I mean, you know, just to try to keep yourself. You know, we're, we're exposed to oxidants all the time, and, you know, obviously you're tearing your muscles apart and things like that, so we just wanted to have that in there for, for more or less the antioxidant purposes is, is the, the major reason. I, I'm a big fan of blueberries. We actually, up here uh, in Pennsylvania, we actually have uh, a lot of blueberries locally, and, man, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, uh, it's, an, amazing, it's an amazing product. You know, if, if, I, if I could have found elderberry, elderberry, 
probably would have put that in there because elderberries are, are really good too. Yeah, the, uh, but I, I couldn't, we couldn't get it with the manufacturer. They didn't have it. And I th- <laughs> they didn't have elderberry. I might be wrong, but I think elderberry is good for heart too, maybe or circulation. I can't remember. Sure, I'm confused sure. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, um, there's been a lot of studies even with that with patients that have cancer or whatever else. I mean, if they eat high doses, it's like I don't want to go off on a, on a wrong tangent or whatever. But like, um, you know, people that are trying to do a more natural approach to to fighting cancer and things like that, you know, preventative for sure. Antioxidants, you know, I mean, like uh, uh, like elderberry are amazing, and they do also have, like you said, health benefits uh, for your heart. You know, exactly. so anytime you can add, you know, a fruit, fruit extract like that, I think it's, it's a good product. You know, it's a good thing to have in there. You know, it then, doesn't add a benefit, you know. And then you've got L-glutamine, which is kind of, it's, it's like one of those amino acids that gets the good and the bad. And some people love it and some people shy away from it. I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of for it. But again, it's always interesting to see people still using glutamine. Oh, the glutamine. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Sean. I had to excuse myself there for a second. My 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 dog is going nuts here. Ray and I are actually at my house here. We're we're, we're um, together. It's about the quietest place we have. So the uh, my dog was was making me like it was, she was just making a lot of noise there. I, I couldn't hear what you said. No, that's okay. about the glutamine. Yeah, no. So so glutamine's one of those products that there's it's probably fifty fifty. People are for it and people are against it. I'm I'm more for it personally, but it's interesting to to see it in in a pre workout. Just that it, it's kind of being used. Just to be honest. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I mean, it was just kind of uh, more or less. You know, you have your recovery. You, you see, you know, um, uh, some products that actually are like a BCAA product with glutamine, and people will actually sip on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Throughout their workout. So. You know, essentially what, what ripcord you kind of have, like, in a nutshell there is you almost have a pre-intra product. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, with, I, I really couldn't say post because I don't know how long it would actually last in there to kind of give you recovery effects. But I think, you know, with, with some of the products in there, they do last a while. I mean, like, there again, with, like, going back to the Norvaline, um, or Norvaline, however you say it. Yep. Um, the, uh, you know, those things tend to, to still be working long after that you've, essentially been training or, you know, working out or doing performing or whatever. Um, you know, so the, uh, uh, rip cords design there was to actually give you a good dose of aminos and antioxidants and then also having your glutamine in there for some recovery and things like that. So, um, you know, more, we're not sure, um, as far as, you know, extreme life performance is concerned is, is, you know, Ray and I've, had multiple conversations about, you know, whether or not we want to create more products. We actually formulated uh, five other products um, that we, we would really like to see in the marketplace. But as far as, as far as it's, con- you know, the, uh, um, the growth of the company or whatever, we're not, we're not sure if we just maybe just want to stick to Ripcord, but the whole thing in, initially, like we weren't designing XLP to be this, you know, widely versed, you know, we have 100 supplements in our line or even six or eight or 10. Like, we really just wanted to focus on ripcord and bring ripcord, like, just giving you all those nutrients to be able to perform, like, you know, pre and then interest, still getting that little bit of recovery in there. Because a lot of people, again, they don't, you know, I mean, you're not eating for, you know, a lot of people, say, an hour and a half, an hour and 20, an hour before, you know what I mean? So your body is essentially empty, you know, but at least some of these other little nutrients will kind of pick up where those, you know, fill those little bit of gaps to kind of keep you, you know, mentally alert and body, your body physically functioning kind of at its, its peak as best as it can on an empty stomach, you know? Yep, yep. And and here's the thing, too. You've got, I, again, as I mentioned earlier, you've got really well-dosed. But here's the thing that I really like personally for the product is your caffeine and hydrous. You're 250 milligrams. And for me personally, I try to keep myself stim sensitive because I don't want to blow up my receptors. I don't want to be a caffeine freak. So personally, yeah. my, my cap is 200 to 250 but in saying that, do you ever get any flack from people saying that the caffeine is not high enough? Um, well, we haven't. I haven't. No, personally, like I don't know about you. Have you got any anybody that said that they would want to see it higher? Um, I, yeah, um, yeah, but uh, also I've also heard people talk about being very ca- uh, uh, very sensitive to caffeine yes. and. Um, I think this dose is uh, pretty much on the low side, but uh, the fact that we have this other uh, uh, alert um, uh, ingredients in there is it's, it's actually the the, the, the major um, uh, contributor to the alertness factors. 
and and I fully yeah, agree. For, for as far as yeah, because as far as caffeine, like you know, um, I'm a high energy guy, like just in general. I've always been like that ever since I was a kid. Like just in general, like the uh, I don't need a lot of stimulant to keep going. And and we've seen a lot of products. I've taken a lot of products, and I've taken some products that were up four to five hundred milligrams of actual caffeine in there. And it makes me crazy, dude. Like, yeah, I literally, like, if I'm in the gym, I'm not looking to, like, push weight. I'm looking to smash stuff. I'm mad. Like, I leave there. I'm pissed off. Like, and, and I feel like sometimes it's uh, your body's overstimulated, you know? So the, uh, you know, our, our 250 was just enough. I think it's enough kick in the ass to get you going, but it's not, it's not, uh, it's not going to be detrimental, even if you still want to have coffee. If Even if you still want to, you know, I mean, even if you still want to have a coffee before, you, you know, you worked out or even after in the afternoon, if, if you're a morning trainer or whatever, then, you know, you can still have that ability to do that. But if you're taking something that's got, you know, upwards of 400 milligrams and then you're adding coffee on top of that, like you said, I mean, some at some point you have to draw a line. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to draw a line to your caffeine, I think. You know, they say, they say, what is it? It's a, half your body, I think, or something like that. Is your, half your body, body weight in milligrams or something like that per day. In caffeine, I've never heard. Or, or what I've, is never, it? I've never heard, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the biggest factor for me was that I've taken a lot of pre-workouts in the past, and uh, uh, the biggest thing that I couldn't get over was the, the overwhelming feeling of a drug-like feeling while I'm working out, and yes. it just disrupted my workouts, and I just couldn't focus how I wanted to, and, of course, the crash. And uh, I just... Uh, uh, when we formulated this, I, I was amazed when I took it for the first time how it just, I, I didn't even feel the effects. As a matter of fact, I, I actually uh, kind of uh, I remember, I remember that. Uh, was I not happy about it, yeah. that I didn't feel anything. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't until about 10 minutes into it that I, I said, oh, this thing just really took over. I just didn't realize it. And it's, it's, it's been, I've been taken ever since. You know, and, and, and I say this in every one of my shows, and, and, and people that listen are probably just slapping their head because I'm kind of a broken record, but I think as a society, we're too over-caffeinated, and it's not helping with a lot of pre-workouts. Like, I had a guest last year, they have a pre-workout that's 600 milligrams. 600. Oh, wow, yeah, wow, wow. That's, yeah, that's, that's way, way too much. Way too much. Yeah, way too, way too much. much. But for, yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking, I mean... Right. But, but I was gonna say, but pe- but people actually, it's a very popular seller, and to some people, it doesn't even six hundred milligrams. It doesn't do anything to them, which is even sadder. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, agreed, agreed. You know, and that and that again, it's just, you know, we we, I don't know how you feel. Like you said, if you're, if two fifty is your overall whole day, you know what I mean? Um, you know, we feel like it's still, it's still enough. You know, I mean, as far as at two fifty, I don't know. I, I think it's enough. You know, like the, uh, um. Because you get too much caffeine, it makes you jittery. It makes you wiry. Like I don't know, I don't know about you back in the day, but if I if I take too much caffeine, I, I um, it almost it does the same thing to me. You know, when I was shoot man, I first started working out in '97, so in like probably '98 '99, um, you know, there was ephedra products and stuff like that were really big back then. And man, I tried that stuff like four or five times. I tried taking that ephedra, yep. and you know, we never we never had pre workouts back then, so I didn't I didn't take any. The biggest thing we took was. Uh, I think at that time I was taking cell tech from muscle tech. That was like my biggest, like, Ooh, you're, you're taking something crazy there. You know what yeah. I mean? Cause you couldn't understand all the ingredients on the label. It was like, Ooh, it's gotta be good. It's gotta be crazy. You know, the, uh, um, but I would get this jittery feeling. Like if I was working out, if I was doing the bench, my feet would be jittery. You know what I mean? And if I, and I think if you take too much, it makes you too nervous. You know, caffeine. Yeah. It can stimulate you. Give me that whole, you know, I guess more or less like you want to crush the world, take on the world type of thing, but it also has negative effects. I think too much like with the jitteriness and the anxiety and I lose focus and all that stuff. I yeah, you lose focus. I, I don't know. I can't concentrate on my workout if I if I if I have something that's overstimulating me. Yeah, I'd be curious to see. Like, I mean, and, and no offense to the company, I mean, I, everybody's got to teach their own. I mean, people you know people can feel out themselves, but I'd be really curious to see how those people function throughout the day that are taking that product, you know what I mean, in general, yep. you know, whether they're taking it in the morning, yep. mid-afternoon, I'd be curious to see them, you know, how they deal with, like, you know, just interacting with their family or work or things like that to see if it actually would have a, an effect, you know, taking, like, that much caffeine in one shot. You know I, mean? I don't know. If, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the studies are or, or whatever. I personally just know I've never, I don't, I can't say never, but I don't really think I've ever been that high even throughout the whole course of a day. Um, 
Yeah, you know, and again, it's all in one shot. You know, again, like we discussed yeah, earlier, yeah, that, you know, you could do you could do a rip cord and then maybe have a cup of coffee later in the afternoon. So you might be doing five hundred in a day, but we're talking one straight shot, right. and you'll be fine, and yeah, you'll, yeah, yeah. you'll be okay yeah. compared to just taking that lump sum. Yeah, in the product, sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, and uh, you know, even going back to that, like we actually put in uh, um, the uh, theobromine. Yep. Um, theobromine's in there, and then also uh, some GABA. Now, and, and I know GABA is kind of on the fence there as far as whether or not it, it crosses the brain, bl- the blood ba- brain barrier, or whatever, and if it actually gets into your brain and works and what have you. But the the essential part of that was to actually um, and uh, along with so so that kind of coupled with uh, if you look at a, if you if you if you go on there and you look at like the the products that we have for like your uh, energy and mood. There's a part in there in our website, actually, it's called uh, Why Ripcord, the, the Functional Breakdown or whatever, uh, on our website. We actually broke down each ingredient, but you can go on there and just kind of, you know, uh, again, just peel it apart for, for what you want. But the uh, um, the whole idea behind our energy and our mood products is to actually um, not allow you to really get that anxiety feeling, you know what I mean, that you might get from, from you know, taking something that's overdosed. But even, if you, even if you take a lot of caffeine, you know what I mean? The GABA and the theobromine. Like theobromine doesn't doesn't actually affect your central nervous system, so you wouldn't get jitters even if you were a little bit more overstimulated on it. Like like mentally, you wouldn't still get like jittery from it or get like you know what I mean? Yep. yep. Um, and the same thing with the uh, the L-theanine. You know what I mean? We put that in there to uh, you know to to actually help because that's kind of like a uh, a precursor to to actually help uh, create more more GABA in your in your in your own self in your brain. You know, um, and then also to uh, um, help with the anxiety, you know. And here's something I don't know if I've ever seen, and maybe I've just overlooked it on pre-workouts. Is you have stevia in here, which is great, and you actually have it listed at 200 milligrams. I don't know if I've ever seen a sweetener actually listed in the milligram percentages. It's usually under like you have your other ingredients section of your label, and generally that kind of stuff is hit is kind of maybe not hidden there, but put there. But right. but I guess kudos yeah. to you for actually listing how much stevia is in there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we tried to get you know I mean like even when we were dealing with a manufacturer, we said to him like you know please list all you know ingredients as much as you can. You know I mean that would actually have an effect or or, or be crucial. You know what I mean as far as to uh, to to um, somebody's concerns as to what they're taking. You know what I mean. The uh, um, I think when we spoke the other day, we had told I had spoken with you. I, you know I told you we had some major flavoring issues. Yep. Um, which was that was that was a battle in itself, just trying to get the flavoring down for this thing because obviously it's a big scoop and there's a lot of uh, tartness to it and things like that. But the uh, um, uh, where was I going with that? The uh, um, sucrose, the added sucrose, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the added sucrose and sucralose and stuff like that. But the um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. But I'm sorry. That's the, okay. um, uh, 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 yeah, 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 no, no, no. The uh, um, yeah, you have to give me a second. I'll have to come back to it. Whatever, whatever. I was just thinking about with the uh, with the sweeteners and stuff like that. The uh, oh, the guy actually that flavor ended up flavoring actually flavored Country Time Lemonade is where I was going with it. Oh, but yeah. the uh, um, we ended up yeah we ended up using two grams of fruit sugar, um, which again you know I mean people so many people were like oh you know you got to use artificial sweeteners you know this that the next thing but two grams essentially like if two grams of of sugar is going to make or break your diet like you're seriously out of your mind like you're 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 on the fence of going in the freaking loony bin. Yeah, if two yeah. grams of sugar is going to well, you, you know what I mean. Your diet, but you know, so we're not a free sugar anyway. Yeah, well, exactly right. So yeah, right. Ray saying off you heard him, but he, you know, your brain actually needs sugar to function. You yes. know. So how many so, so how many renditions yeah. of flavoring? How many renditions of flavoring did you actually go through? Because I know you finalized with with cherry, oh. strawberry, lemonade. Um, but I guess how many renditions did you guys go through? I think we lost count after like. Nine or ten. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a battle, man. We that actually was had one of the yeah. hardest part about this. Yeah, uh, we, the flavoring. Um, after we had honed it down here at home, and uh, um, we we gave them uh, the exact dosing of what we wanted in the for sweetener. Um, it turns out that the sweetener we were using had a patent on it, and he couldn't use it, but he didn't tell us that. And he ends up doing this whole um, sweetening thing and uh, 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 send it to us, and it was nothing. 
nothing remotely as to what we had finished uh, at home here, and we were pretty upset about it. Yeah, yeah, we went through quite a few, man. We got to the point where we actually, like Ray was saying, they actually, the manufacturer ended up sending us. Um, we had had all the, the stevia and things like that here, um, you know, as far as ingredients. But they ended up sending us their, their actual raw um, flavor as far as the uh, uh, the natural flavoring that they were going to use, you know what I mean, like that we actually had to end up mixing up. And it, it was it was quite a to-do, man. It was really quite a to-do. Our, our My kitchen table... The, uh, my kids were actually pretty hyped up for a while. I think there was so much ripcord powder in the air there for a few months that where we were uh, every day. I mean, we were, I mean, really, I'm telling you, we would mix this stuff up. Like, if you would have seen us, you probably really thought we were a little crazy because we were sitting here. We said if anybody ever came in here, like, like police wise or whatever, like that, we would have probably been arrested. But like my kitchen table, we had. 30 some ingredients on there that, you know what I mean, that we're sitting there toying around with weighing out on a grand scale and whatever else to try to figure this thing out. And we were doing initially when we first started because we were really kind of anal about it. We literally took every ingredient that you see on Ripcord, we actually dosed out individually for each serving one, you know what I mean? Like, so if it was 200 milligrams, it was 200 milligrams that we weighed it out, put it in there, put it aside. That's one serving, put it in there, go to the next ingredient, open a bag, put it in next ingredient, open a bag, put an ingredient, next yep. bag, open an ingredient, put it in. Oh, dude, it was insane. So then, but then we got smart enough to where we weighed it all out in, in 30 servings, okay. right? So 30, you know, if it, it was, if it was 200 milligrams, we weighed it out to, to be 30 times 200 milligrams. And we weighed it out like that. But then we started making it in my food mixer in a, in a, in my wife's, my wife's uh, blender, you know what I mean? So okay. we tried to, to try to figure it out, you know? And, so, and there was light powder dude, everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> man. Like, it was on my TV in the living room, you know what I mean? Like, because we would sit there because, you know, in fear of it not mixing well, this blender was literally running for what? What we had run like an hour and a half? Yeah. Like an hour and a half, this blender's in there. Jeez. Ray and I are just standing in there. Like, my wife was taking pictures of us just, just making sure that it was splendid, you know what I mean? So the, uh, anyway, yeah, sorry. Again, long-winded. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so weird question now. So, when people look at your website, okay, because I actually watched your video earlier today, is there a true core audit audience that you guys are trying to hit? Because obviously, we're talking more of the fitness, more of the bodybuilding, more gym stuff. But yet, on your website and verbiage, and on your video, you've got snowboarders yep. and dirt bike riders and, and cars and all sorts yep. of stuff. I mean, are you are you trying to just kind <laughs> yeah. of hit every active sport, or is there a true core you're trying to hit? You know, in all honesty, Sean, I'm going to be at 100% honest. We, we haven't nailed down um, a core anybody, you okay. know, and I don't think that that's great. I don't think that's great for marketing purposes because it makes it really difficult. Um, but, you know, we, um, like I said, me, me old school history, like I, I, I like to take ripcord. I mean, if we go snowboarding, we take it. You know what I mean? If, if we're if we're out, you know, like uh, riding machines or whatever, like we take it. If we're, you know, my, my brother-in-law is really big into mountain biking and, and, and cycling on the road. He loves it for that. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, for these guys over the summer, we actually got hit up by a friend of ours. They didn't even know it was us yet. Uh, I got a call from one of my friend's wives that runs this, uh, uh it was called the honeybee hair scramble. And, uh, it was, uh, you know, it's a four wheel and dirt bike race through the woods and fields. And it's, it's like literally two hours of just all out, as fast and hard as you can go through mud, rocks, terrain, you name it, um, that these guys race, you know. So they invited us to come up, and uh, uh, they're like, you know, we see you have a, an energy drink, you know, and lo, lo and behold, I'm like, yeah. I said, you know, and they're like, holy smokes, we didn't realize it was you. And I'm like, yeah, no. I said, you know, we just saw the truck, so we called the number, you know. So uh, we go up there to this thing, and lo and behold, these guys all actually take product for for racing, Interesting. okay, because they're trying to alleviate, yeah, they're trying to alleviate arm pump, what they call so. The first day we're there, we got our little our tent set up, and we got, you know, my truck's there and whatever else, and there's, you know, there's a bunch of vendors there and stuff, and and uh, they're like, oh, well, does it give you a pump? You know, and we're like, oh, yeah, it gives you a great pump. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no, we don't, want to try, we, don't want, we don't want to try it. You know what I mean? And I'm like, damn, I said to my wife, I'm like, we ain't, we're probably not coming back here. We'll never do another one of these. We couldn't even get anybody to try it. Yeah. So finally, finally, like towards the middle of the day, maybe towards the middle of the end, we get a guy to try it, and he's like, wow, this is really good, you know? So then he sends over a couple more people and a couple more people. So lo and behold, we finally got somebody that was actually trying it that was going to race, which is kind of sketchy because these guys, like, they're pretty 
uh, I don't know why, they're calculated as far as like what they take. You know, I mean, they're not really willing to try something new on race day and of fear course. that they're going to shit their brains out. You know what I mean? They're out on the track, you know what I mean, or whatever. Um, but anyway, so we get somebody to try it, and they come back, and they're like, dude, I got no arm pump. And we're like, okay. I'm like, <laughs> so you do get a pump. I'm like, no, no, that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, so we start explaining, well, our pump versus the gym, what we want it's more or less they want more blood flow. Their arms are getting locked up and cramped up. So I think with the creatine and all the blood flow and all that stuff, like these guys are having tremendous great results with this product. So that ended up stemming into us. Literally, we ended up getting wrapped up in what they call the Winoa series last year. And, and what, a lot of it, what you see is us going to these dirt bike races. But, dude, they loved it, you know. So so that just set it in stone for us that, like, our product is not just intended and meant for the gym. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you can take this thing again, like... I have people you know. that take it and go to work. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They just go, they take it in the morning and they go to work. Uh, they they tell me it helps them focus, uh, um, get the work done, uh, paperwork, help all things, you know? Yep. So, so, I'm gonna, so, so Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down a different path here for a minute. I want to talk to Ray for, for just a minute if I can because I, I used to absolutely, compete. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I used to compete years ago, Ray, and, and I did see – I think you and I linked up on Instagram, and, and this isn't a line. You do look phenomenal for 54 or whatever you said your age was. You look phenomenal. <laughs> so thank do you, you, do you, you. compete bodybuilding or are you doing classic or what are you doing? I do I, – I, I, I was doing bodybuilding for a majority of uh, my life, and um, – uh, when they started doing physique, I, 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 I uh, classified his physique. Okay. Um, that, that caught my interest because that meant that as I'm getting older, I felt like wearing these uh, um, small bikinis, I felt, started feeling a bit uncomfortable. And uh, <laughs> so wearing the, the bigger trunks were, were actually uh, um, felt good. So uh, that's the reason I switched over. So I do both, actually. So I'll, I'll do. I'll enter a competition and I'll, I'll do one uh, classic physique and one uh, bodybuilding. So do you NPC or what federation do you do you compete in? NPC. Yeah. P- P- well, again, it's been years since I competed, but people always ask which was harder for me personally: diet or or dieting or the actual training. And the actual hardest for me, like, like you yeah. mentioned a minute ago, was putting on the speedo and stepping in front of fifty, a hundred, two hundred strangers looking at me in this in a thong. That was my biggest fear out of anything. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Actually, uh, there's a, a a story where I don't. Yeah, do you know Ronnie Coleman by any chance? Of course. Well, which, uh, well, which one? Yeah. You talk about the the, the Olympia uh, Ronnie Coleman. Uh, yeah, Mr. Olympia okay, yep. uh, Ronnie Coleman. He was like eight time Mr. Olympia. Oh sure, yeah. And yep. uh, the story goes, story goes that he wasn't winning in it. He was placing always at the around ten or even lower yep. uh, mark. Um, and uh, Mr. Olympia and um, he met up with one of the the, the higher placing guys and uh, he brought him to his house and he basically sat him down and told him that that um, have a drink, and he says, it's the night before the show, how am I going to have a drink? And he said, trust me, have a drink. It was Lavroni, I saw and, it, and, uh, it was, it was a documentary. Called me, drank. Yes. Yes, Kevin exactly. Lavroni, yep. Right, and so uh, that the next day, he to- he had him eating, um, drinking, and then he had him eating pizza, and the next day, he actually won the show. Yeah, I know, Kevin was pissed off about so, that. I did see that, it was phenomenal. <laughs> so, what I do, and I've been doing for a long time, is is I actually have a drink before I go on stage. Sure. But yes, did you, did you it keeps read... me my nerves. Uh, it keeps me calm and actually relaxes me and actually helps me perform. See, I was always told red wine, but what do you what do you drink before you go on stage? Australia uh, uh, cognac. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> some people do wine. I I I, I understand that. Um. Actually, some people actually prep and they do the red wine uh, uh, the night before, or two nights before. But um, I actually drink the day of. Okay, and Ray, do you do you subscribe to any specific food? I, I, I want to say diet because I don't like diet because it's generally negative. But any kind of food habits? Are you a keto guy? You're high carbs? What do you generally follow? I I uh, uh, you're, you're gonna laugh at this, but I I've done uh, what I call a pizza diet. And okay. basically, um, I'll eat pizza to the the day of the contest. Come um, on. It's it's not it's, seriously. It's not it's not necessarily uh, what you eat, but uh, how many calories you eat. Sure. And to, uh, versus how many calories you burn 
and um, actually, uh, I, I'm I'm still trying to hone it down because it's new to me. But um, I actually um, uh, um, I try to minimize cardio. Even in the past, I used to work. I used to do uh, anywhere 15, 20 minutes uh, in the morning of cardio, and the same in the evening. And then it, it, it to like get to about an hour and a half to hour 45 minutes. Um, in the morning and in the evening, I ended up with uh, a physique that was really, really, really just depleted. Um, lost a lot of weight, and um, uh, it, it's nothing to what I wanted to uh, appear on stage. And as of late, what I do is I basically uh, just watch the calorie intake. It doesn't matter what you eat. Uh, fat wise, yeah, I, I I'm more uh, careful about saturated fats and stuff, but. As far as uh, um, restricting my diet with any kind of special, like I just do the five or six Tupperwares of chicken and broccoli sure. and stuff like that. I, I don't do any of that. I eat like regular. I just make sure that um, uh, the total amount, I'm always in a deficit as I'm getting ready for a show yep. and um, just get leaner. That's it. So, so at 54, it sounds like you still have an amazing metabolism. Yeah, well, I I disagree with you. <laughs> Actually, I can put on the weight very easily. It's just like I said, I um I um I am very strict with uh, um and, and uh, determine and uh, uh, watch what I eat as far as uh, how much I eat and uh, um you know I, I you're gonna laugh, but I um I'm eating too late at night before I go to bed. I eat bowls of cereal, I eat ice cream, uh, eat yes. anything I want as long as I'm um, within my calorie uh, allowance sure. and um, I have no issues. Well, that's like, like one of my favorite competitors is Dexter Jackson, and Dexter Jackson always says he does little to no cardio at all. Exactly. I agree with him 100%. It's, a, it's actually... It, 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 as a matter of fact, the more cardio you do, the more calories you should be eating. So any more energy expenditures that you do more than the, than your your if you're if you're already in a calorie deficit and you're doing cardio on top of that, your your body's gonna um, fight you all the way as far as to releasing body fat. It's just not gonna play that game with you. Yep, yep. Do you have any, have you looked at this year's show list? Are you doing anything this year? Yes, I'm actually doing one in May. I'm actually doing one in May, actually May 25th or 26th, I think it is. And um, I started the process already, and uh, it's, it's it's no cardio. I stay away from cardio. I, I train heavy all the way to the very last day. Uh, there's no high repping, no nothing of any sort. Uh, I just train uh, like I normally would, and uh, uh, a lot of people would get uh, that mixed up when when you start leaning down and you start trying to uh, uh work with light uh, higher reps and lighter weights and and um being in a calorie deficit you just lose muscle your body your body's gonna get rid of the muscle mass because you're not using it exactly so exactly. you have to keep it up no well, perfect i i appreciate the insight and uh you know i i wish exactly. you luck in your upcoming shows but again you and there isn't a line you oh, do look phenomenal absolutely. in 54 Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Did did Mike disappear to take the dog out, or is he still there too? I'm sorry. Did Mike disappear, or did he? Or is he still there too? Yeah, oh, he's here. He's here. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just listening or whatever. I did actually have to fiddle with the dog a little bit. She's she's a it's we just got a it's a Vichler or whatever, and, and she's an awesome dog. But she's she unless you're giving her attention right now, she's super whiny. She's like a little toddler, you know. So she's only about 14 weeks old, but she. Uh, um, she needs a lot of attention. She literally likes to be picked up like a baby and whatever else. And and uh, if you're here, she wants to be constantly like of with course. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so guys, I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation thus far. Is is there anything else you guys might want to let the listeners know about future plans? Anything else as we slowly wind down? No, I mean, uh, you know, if, if anybody, uh, you know, if any of your listeners, you know, uh, have a you know a gym or a place that they'd like us to come you know to to set up shop and try you know try ripcord if they think that there would be an avenue for us to kind of get our name out there we'd love to you know if it's within the scope of us driving distance wise you know what i mean we'd love to you know go be more than happy to go there you know what i mean if they had a suggestion or whatever ripcord uh, shots right yeah you know the uh in the meantime um 
you know, if, if anybody wants to try it, you know, we really want to earn your trust and, and your respect and things like that. If you'd like to try Ripcord in the meantime, you can certainly hit us up on Facebook or Instagram and, uh, you know, simply just ask and, and you know, all we all require is just DM us your your, uh, your shipping information and we'll get you out a couple of Rip-It packs. We call them Rip-Its um, just because you rip it open whenever you can take it with you. And, and uh, But it's a single serving of Ripcord. You know, we'd be more than happy to get them out to you so you can give it a shot and, and see for yourself. Perfect. And, and gentlemen, where can people find you? Pl- post the, the web, I mean, plug the website, social medias, everything else. Uh, right now, so it's extremelifeperformance.com. So that's without the E, obviously, just XT, um, uh, extremelifeperformance.com. And then uh, you could also type in ripcord.com if you want. It's just R-I-P. It's with a K, not a C. So it's ripcord.com. It's a little bit simpler, but it actually forwards to Extreme Life Performance. Um, we're on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Extreme Life Performance. Um, so you can find us either place there. Um, yeah, that, that's. I don't think we won't have any other avenues, right? Other than yeah. that, yeah, unless you want to give us a shout, we have a phone number. You can give us a shout if, if you want. You know, if they have any questions or whatever. Um, but other than that, as far as social media, that's that's really it for us right now. Perfect. Well, gentlemen, again, it's really been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. Um, I really do appreciate the time this morning. Again, folks, give these guys a look on all social media platforms. Definitely give Ray a look. Again, not just blowing smoke up this guy's ass. He really is a, at 54 looking phenomenal. I mean, shit, there's people that are half his age that, that do not look <laughs> half sure, as good. Um, but anyway, gentlemen, again, <laughs> yeah. you know, I really do appreciate yeah. your time. Folks, as always, feel free to follow us on Stitcher, Stitcher iTunes, YouTube, podcast garden and for people that follow us on itunes please do me a favor and leave me a review um would love to hear what you guys think and again positive reviews breed positive uh, i guess feedback and obviously more listeners to the show anyway folks thank you so much have a great happy new year and we look forward to continued success take care thanks john appreciate you having simon thank you both all right let's